Hello, Facebook world. It's nice to see you. I'm Kirsten Hagland, and I'm here to welcome you to another episode of Weekly Hope right here on the Eating Disorder Hope Facebook page. I'm so glad that you're joining us. Um, we have got a really, really cool show for you today. We're going to be talking about how to sustain long-term recovery post treatment, post-treatment for an eating disorder. So very, very important conversation. I'm really excited to introduce our guest, which I will do in a moment. But before we do that, I want to let you know a little bit about the show. So uh, if this is your first time joining us on Weekly Hope, what we do here is we bring in experts, clinicians, professionals, advocates, people with their own recovery stories every single week to have a conversation with them about a different topic. Uh, and we've done a wide range of different issues, and we're always open to hearing from you about what issues you would like to have a conversation about. So if you're watching this and you say, hey, I'd really love to hear Kirsten and a guest or to get someone on to talk about X, Y, or Z issue, please let us know. That would be incredibly helpful because we want to serve you. Um, if you're joining us again, because we do have people that join us every single week here on the show, we want to say welcome back. We're so happy to have you. And that introduces another element of this show, and that's that we want to make it a conversation. So if you are here, please um, let us know in the comments. Tell us your name, where you're signing in from. Um, it's really cool. We actually have people that watch the show from all over the world. So it's always fun to see where people are watching from. So uh, let us know. Say hello. And also throughout the show, if you've got a question, if you want to share um, a part of your own story, um, if there's a way that you'd like the conversation to go, let us know. Um, that feedback is really, really helpful. And I can bring your question up on the screen. I can ask our guest. Um, we just want to make sure that this is something that's really hopeful and, and helpful for you, right? So we want to make sure you're a part of this conversation. That's what we are all about. Um, and just one more thing before we dive into our topic, I want to give you a little update on some really, really cool stuff that Eating Disorder Hope has been able to do over the last two days. So in case you didn't notice, um, I've got a hotel background here. And uh, if you've been watching, you know that I usually live most of the time in Germany and Switzerland. Um, and I'm doing the show most of the time from there, but I'm actually back in the United States. Um, I flew back stateside on Friday and have been in Dallas, Fort Worth area, actually Fort Worth officially, um, speaking at Texas Christian University, TCU, over the past two days. And it has been an absolutely phenomenal experience. Um, I was so excited several months ago earlier this year to um, get the request from um, a student leader at Panhellenic, and Panhellenic basically is an organization that covers all of Greek life on college campuses, um, from one of the women at Panhellenic and inviting me to come speak. And so um, I came out here on Sunday. We did a Facebook Live, actually. So um, you can check out that interview with two of the student leaders um, on Sunday afternoon about conversation about raising awareness of eating disorders on college campuses, as well as promoting positive body image. And those women were awesome, and they're doing great, great work here. And then Monday night, um, which was just yesterday, uh, and um, it was, uh, we had about probably 300 to 400 women, um, Panhellenic students, but it was university wide. It was open to everyone. And um, I was able to speak and we were able to talk about how we cultivate positive body image, how we promote that among our peers, how we develop a healthy sense of self worth and self image. Um, and prevent eating disorders on not only college campuses, but everywhere. And it was such an honor for me to speak. And I was so inspired by the women because these girls are like, they weren't just there to sit and listen. Like they are engaged in this. They are working really hard on campus. Um, they're starting the body project next semester. They've got body positivity peer educators who are active all over campus. And it was just, it was so, so cool to see that like on top of everything that they're doing with their studies and extracurricular activities and everything that they're all also so engaged on this issue and also willing to be, you know, I think that there can be a stereotype around, about sororities, Greek life, um, and that they can be perpetuators of negative body image or things like eating disorders. But these girls were like, no, we're having this conversation. We want to be open. We want to be able to provide people with resources um, and make sure that this is out in the open. So if people are struggling, they know how to get help. Um, and they, we can be on the lookout to take care of the women around us so that we don't let something like an eating disorder or like just crippling um, low self-worth and self-esteem negatively impact our lives. So we can go on to be stronger and build resistance and be a positive light in our communities. So it was just, it was extremely encouraging to me. And I wanna say thank you to the entire program at TCU for having me um, and, uh, 
for having me in Eating Disorder Hope. And it was just it was just a really, really cool night. So just wanted to give you a little update and also to let you know that that video of me with the girls is on our Facebook page and it's going to be uploaded to our YouTube page if you're interested or if you have um, a, a friend or a family member who might be going through college, it might be hopeful for them as well. So, all right, so that's the TCU update. And now let's get into our program and I'll introduce our guest and I'll bring her on screen. There is Shannon Hershkowitz who's joining us. Um, Shannon is the is an alumni recovery coach at Rosewood Centers for Eating Disorders. She is joining us from Arizona. And this woman is, has been doing fabulous things in the eating disorder community for years. And she's gonna talk to us today about her passion for helping people post treatment, what that looks like. And she has created a really incredible program um, to be able to help individuals post treatment. So she's gonna, we're gonna dive into all of those details with her. So Shannon, welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, my pleasure. Oh, and we've already got a hello. Debbie says hello. Hi, Debbie. Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Nelson. Hi, Debbie. Um, and of course, anyone else who's signing on, say hello and, and let us know where you're signing in from. And of course, questions throughout, we're happy to take. Um, so Shannon, first of all, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about what you do at Rosewood? Well, I do a lot. Um, I've been in the field for about uh, 18 years. Um, I, I've done a lot of roles at Rosewood. Um, I have been a, I started as a tech. I went into uh, be a social worker. I worked intake. Um, and I, Rosewood gave me a really incredible gift about six years ago and allowed me to create an my program. Uh, I started seeing at the time a lot of, a lot of, not a lot, but quite a few of our alum were calling back in a state of distress, uh, just in that panic mode, and they just needed additional help. So when I went into the alumni uh, recovery coach role, that's when I was able to create uh, a very successful and effective alumni program. You want me to talk on the program? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, there was just a little bit of a delay. That's why <laughs> why I was waiting. Um, yeah, um, it's, called, it's called Operation Recovered, right? It's Operation Recover Ed. Recover Ed. Okay, perfect. Yes, tell us about it. Okay, so like I just said, it's very effective. Um, we are. What it is is I I don't like to see someone leave a program receive even aftercare plan and a pat on the back and say, good luck. We all know that that's, that does not work. That's not effective. So what I've created is I'm not a huge fan of social media, but social media is where the world is today. So we started by creating a Facebook page. This is a closed group. Um, and we started with just a few people and we have well over a thousand people, um, alum, Rosewood alum from all around the world, uh, who are a part of that. And Kirsten, it, it's just to be able to come to a group and not have to explain what's going on is a gift to, to say, Hey, I'm struggling and to have other people from all around the world say, I gotcha. I understand. I, I know what you're going through. That is a gift to people. Um, within that group, we've separated. We have an adolescent group. We have an adult group. And we also have a family and friends page within that Facebook. Um, also in there, we have uh, a meal prep group. We have a book club. We have um, We have a writing group. So it's really great to go to the to the post office and actually end up with a dozen letters from people that you've never met. Uh, it's, it's all about community. So it's, we're, we're very active in schools today. The alum want to talk, they want to share, they want to give what they didn't have um, when they were in school. So we, we go to any school that will let us in to talk to kids about healthy coping skills. We go into um, a really great thing is um, we have support of the Anna Weston Act and we travel to Washington, D.C. twice a year as well. And to guide and to lead the alum, sit with our state senators and talk about eating disorders, it's just incredible. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so cool what you've done with that. Mm -hmm. I want to just highlight a few people that we've got signing on. We've got Lynn from Santa Monica yeah. and I'm supporting Shannon and Eating Disorder Hope also. Thank you so much, Lynn. And we've got Denise who often signs in from South Africa. Denise wow. is our South African friend. Hey there, girl. How are you? I hope you're doing well and having a good day. Um, and we've got Dina as well, Dina Larson Gasly. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Dina Gasly. Gasly, yep. Gaisley. Wonderful. So it seems like you guys are friends signing in from Queens Creek, Arizona. So cool. Um, so, what are some principles? You talked about a lot of the great benefits of being a part of an alumni program mm -hmm. like Rosewoods. Um, yeah. But what are some of the principles? You know, obviously, there are probably there are a lot of people watching who were not able to go maybe to a residential treatment program. Um, they're trying to figure out what recovery looks like post treatment. What are some principles that you have found that have really worked with mm -hmm. Operation Recover Ed that people need to start incorporating into their life post treatment? <clears throat> Excuse me. Number one. And this, this is our motto in the alumni program is speak your truth. Speak your truth. No matter what, take off your mask, speak your truth. One thing that I've learned is people with eating disorders, um, you know what? They, they hide their eating disorder. It is that love-hate relationship. Um, it's, it's not something that is easy for them to give up. So when... In recovery, no matter what, you've got to speak your truth. You're going to struggle. There's no question about it. It takes so much strength to say, I'm not okay. I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time. People with eating disorders tend to think that they don't want to be a burden. Um, they're supposed to, to, be, to have this down. They're supposed to know how to recover. So first and foremost, no matter what, speak your truth. Um, another thing is, is transition. We believe in transition, but your transition, your, your team outside of where, wherever it is that you go to has got to be eating disorder specialist. You can't go to any doctor. You can't go to any dietitian. They have to understand what it is that you're going through. Now, several years ago or many years ago, there weren't many professionals who understood what eating disorders are. Today is looking better. So there are more out there. So definitely do your research and create that team of eating disorder specialists. Um, and then a third one would be to create your support system. As much as we love our family and friends, Sometimes we have to realize that they may not, they may or they may not be our support. Mm. So recovery family, you've got to find it. I hear from a lot of people is nobody gets it. Nobody understands. There are people out there. You got to find them, whether that be in 12 step groups, whether that be in Facebook. Um, so really build your community. Your support system can't be one or two people. It's got to be a community. Those are three principles that we really, um, that I really encourage with the alum to, um, to go after. Absolutely. So, so good. And um, just want to, I see we've got a, a couple more people joining us. Just want to say hello and welcome. We're here with Shannon Hershkowitz. She's an alumni recovery coach with Rosewood. Um, and she's talking to us about how to create a long lasting recovery long term and just want to welcome you here and say that if there's any time that you have a question or you want to hear Shannon talk about something to feel free to join the conversation to say hello um, to make a comment um, we're here for you and we welcome that engagement throughout the broadcast so just want to make sure that you guys are, are hearing that um, you mentioned social media and how you're not a big fan even though we're so glad that you're here on social media. <laughs> and I mean, I tend to agree with you. And actually, we talked quite a bit about this yesterday with the girls at TCU and how so many of us are on it. But how do we use it intentionally? How do we use it for good instead mm -hmm. of 
were bad because so many of the women could relate to the feeling of being on Instagram for 20 minutes and scrolling, 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 mm -hmm. but not feeling any better for it afterward. Mm -hmm. Similarly, um, Facebook and Instagram can be full of extremely triggering images and conversations. Um, and it can make some people feel like they want to sign off altogether. But at the same time, it can be used for good. And you said, you know, this is where people are at. So what are some tips that you can give people for using social media for good? Social media can be so triggering, like you said. Um, one of the things that we did recently, which I really loved, is we had Taryn Brumfit um, from Embrace come from um, Australia. Wonderful, wonderful woman. And she had the alum pull out their phones during this, during her uh, her speech, and she had them delete people who were not um, not support for them, and to add the good. Okay, to add people who do feed uh, what we need in recovery. You have the piranha sites. You have you have all of these negative sites. Um, I feel. You have to know what you want in your recovery. Okay. I was talking to a young lady this morning and there was somebody on her Facebook who was really, really encouraging her to remain sick. And it's about setting those boundaries, about knowing what you want, putting yourself and your recovery first. Your recovery has to be a priority. Okay. So, one thing that people have to realize is in social media, I'll use Facebook. It's okay to unfollow people. A lot of people think they can't they can't remove someone or block someone because they will know and that they don't want to offend them. It is okay to click on that unfollow button um, and start to build that that the healthy side of, of social media. It's not all bad. There's a lot of good there, but it stems from here. What is it that you want? What is it that you need? Some people I support logging completely off of social media. It's not a healthy thing for them, but mm -hmm. it's not all bad. It's there's for for the alum side of it. There's a lot of good in that group, and we also have the Instagram, and we I do the Snapchat with the kids, so I come up with really cute faces and whatnot. <laughs> there's the Twitter, so. Also, another thing is when, you, when you're reading a post, I need people to know that it's okay to scroll. You don't have to reply to every single thing, okay? So if something is negative, if, if something is triggering, let it go. You don't have to act on it. So it really depends on the person. It can be great for some, and then for, for others, they just need to get off of it completely. Yeah. I want to bring up a question from Denise. Denise says, I'm in recovery on my own with three amazing friends from the USA helping me, which is awesome. Congratulations. She says, but I'm looking for extra support. Is anyone able to join the Facebook group? And, and I would just probably add to that. If not, Shannon, do you have some recommendations for pages um, or hashtags that people can follow like Denise who are looking for support? So for the Rosewood group, Denise, um, that's only for our Rosewood alum. But I strongly encourage you, if if you feel comfortable with it, is to actually connect with me on my personal Facebook page. I am working to create something outside of Rosewood um, for those of you who do need that extra support. Wonderful. That's great. And we have got is um, Shannon, the the page that I tagged in the description for this video. Is that the correct Facebook page for people to to click on? You know, uh, where do I see that at person? <laughs> uh, okay, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll figure it out later. But yeah, if you if you if if you um, if you um, search for Shannon Hershkowitz on Facebook and, and find her that way and send her a message. Um, like she said, um, she can help you to find yeah. some support. So I have a lot of resources as well. So I'm more than happy to connect you. The really great thing too about our alumni program is because we are worldwide. Uh, one of the things that I do strive for is to connect you with people in your area.
to help with even additional, uh, maybe face to face or, you know, meet over, you know, taking a walk or something to help people build their support system. So, so great. That's perfect. Thank you, Shannon. And Denise actually says that's amazing. Thanks. So way to go. Um, Okay, so what do you think in your many years of working with girls transitioning from treatment into the real world, um, what do you think the most important thing is to think about um, when they're preparing to discharge or, or if they're just in an outpatient setting and they're getting ready to go back to college, for example, or mm -hmm. go back to that difficult, stressful job, when they're kind of making those preparations to go back to the real world, what are some important things to keep in mind and to think about? So many people have to go back, like you said, to where they came from. So they are returning back to their, their environment, perhaps their very unhealthy environment. What I want to tell you is the key word here is change. Okay. Change starts with me. Change starts with you. It's not something for us to go home and expect for everyone else to do things differently to support me in recovery. It's got to be something that you have to, to know what you want. You have to follow your aftercare plan. When you leave, I say this to all my alum, and I know that my alum will laugh, don't touch your meal plan. You have to let the professionals set this up, and it's your responsibility to follow it. Do not leave with a big head and think, I got this. I can do this on my own. I don't need anyone. That's very common, um, or they'll work their aftercare plan for a little while and then go off on their own. You have to follow your aftercare plan. And the boundaries are so important because you have to be able to say, you know what, Kirsten, you're a good friend of mine, but I'm working on my recovery and I, I need to pull back. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have to be able to speak up for yourself. So recovery starts with self. So remember uh -huh. self-care, self-love, self-worth, self-confidence. That's where your recovery lies. So when you when you leave a program like Rosewood and you have 24-7 support, that's not going to be there when you go home. So you have to be prepared by knowing what it is that you need. So you have to follow the aftercare plan. You have to go to your support groups. You have to go see your, your therapist and your dietitian. Go to those appointments and, of course, speak your truth. But change starts with us. So if you want something different, you have to do something different. You have to do the work. You can't expect everyone else to do it for you. That is so good. <laughs> and and it is hard because you probably, in the course of treatment, you become very aware of the yep. ways that people and relationships have maybe helped to perpetuate some of, or have significantly impacted your eating disorder recovery. So with that heightened awareness, you go back and you think, well, they shouldn't be acting that way or they shouldn't be saying that, but they didn't just spend three months in treatment. <laughs> Um, they have not been through the same process. So it starts with us and knowing that what we are doing and the new behaviors and attitudes we've adopted, that we have to stay strong in those, even if the rest of the world, Absolutely. people continue to be toxic. Absolutely. Um, so I want to talk with you about relapse. Um, people often say relapse is a part of recovery. And Maybe for some people it is not, but for probably, and I don't have a statistic on this, but probably for the majority of people it is. So how do you, in working with the post-treatment community, talk with them about relapse? How do we have a constructive conversation about it that doesn't make people feel defeated if they do relapse, but that there is hope even if they do? Mm -hmm. That's... That's a great question, and it's a very sensitive topic. Um, I believe that when, when it comes to relapse and lapses, it's not if, but when. They're going to happen. 
a lot of people in the eating disorder world are perfectionist. So for those that struggle with the perfectionism, recovery rocks their world because it's something that they cannot perfect. I wish they could perfect it, but they can't perfect it. It's so messy. But the key is when you struggle, when you slip up, you're going to slip up. We're human. We're supposed to we're supposed to struggle. We're, we're meant to struggle. But the key is to speak your truth. When you do slip, you pick up that phone and you call someone or you reach out to somebody and say, hey, I'm having a hard time. Can you sit with me Take off that mask and admit it? When we keep those secrets, we feed the eating disorder. We have a saying of secrets keep us sick, and they do. So when you struggle, reach out right away. A slip does not mean a spiral. And if you act upon um, that struggle as soon as it happens and get that help, this is how we avoid a relapse. Mm. We don't have to ride it all the way down. But by keeping that secret and wearing that mask and acting like everything is okay, this is where you run into trouble. So when you slip, when you have that hard time, when you act out in that behavior, right away, hold yourself accountable. It's not, it's not a shame on you. It is a, it, it takes so much courage and so much strength to admit when you, when you lapse, when you relapse. But instead of having to go from home to inpatient, perhaps you could go back to outpatient and, and stay on track that Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such a really great point because um, I love how you mentioned, and, and we are still just on a little bit of a delay. Just want to let everyone know if you are seeing that, but we can, we can hear Shannon just perfectly. Um, so I hope that, that that's okay for all of you. Uh, I love what you said, though, that a, a relapse or a slip doesn't have to be a spiral because of the perfectionism. It's, it's so, so hard not to get into black and white thinking again. Yeah. Um, but by removing that mask and admitting when you slip up, it is a huge prevention tool. And I just want to underline that <laughs> five times because it's so, so important. Um, yeah. We have a thing in the Rosewood. Is when you, well, I, I guess across the world is when you fall down seven times, you get up eight. I've never yeah. heard of someone only falling seven times. You're going to fall 7,000 times. You're going to fall 70,000 times. But I believe that we don't wake up and say, I want to have an eating disorder. But recovery is a choice. It, it, it is a minute by minute, hour by hour choice that we choose to do that work. We choose to continue to fight. Mm -hmm. So... That's that's where your relapse comes in. So when it does show its ugly face, speak your truth and get that help. Yeah, absolutely. Such a great reminder. Um, last question here for Shannon and just want to en encourage this is the last question I have. But if you guys have a question um, and or something that you want Shannon to talk about, make sure you ask it now before we sign off. Um, last question, Shannon. Um, you've been in this field for a long time and mm -hmm. there you know, there is a very high burnout rate for treatment professionals in the eating disorder world. And I think probably part of that has to do with the fact that it can be so hard to see some people do so well in recovery and go on to live healthy, full, productive lives, have families achieve their dreams, be free from an eating disorder for the rest of their life and others continue to struggle so much. Um, but I know you've probably heard your share of and experienced your share of hopeful, inspiring stories, people who have achieved long-term recovery. And so I would love for you to encourage us and the people watching um, and, you know, just tell us your belief about the possibility of long-term lifelong recovery, that it is possible, even if you relapse, like, because I know that it's just a message a lot of people need to hear. It is possible. Recovery is possible. But let me tell you, recovery is exhausting. 
it is exhausting. And for a lot of people, they spend more time down than they do up. One of the, one of the great things about in the eating disorder world, Kirsten, I have met some of the strongest people I have ever met. And that's because they have to fight for their life every single day. Every day they wake up and it's, it's the same thing. And I get those calls where they're exhausted and they can't do it anymore. And I always ask them, you can't or you won't because you can, you can do it. You're loved. You're strong. You're courageous. You're, you're incredible. But we, I, your family, your friends, your professional team, we can't do work for you. You have to do it for yourself. You have to find your, your, your recovery has to be your priority. Think about all the time that you spent with the eating disorder and the planning and the thoughts. I want you to take that and put that into your recovery. You are worthy of this and you can do it. No question about it, you can do it. But my question to you is, is how bad do you want it? What are you willing to do for it? There's no greater gift. And, and I've had some of the alum, Christmas is coming. A great idea to take a box an empty box and wrap it and give it to your family and tell them that your your gift to them for the holidays is your recovery. Make that call. Make that call. Um, we feel like we don't deserve it. We don't we don't want to disappoint our families. We don't want to disappoint our our friends. We need you. We need you in this world. We need you in this life. Pick up the phone and ask for help. So many people are, are unable to get the help because of insurance. I hate insurance companies. We won't go there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? That's not the only place to recover. There are resources. There is help in, you know, all over the United States. And I am more than happy to help someone get that help, whether it be to make uh, referrals, to give you resources, Yes, I have watched people recover. And um, you know what? I wish I could say that you can recover in 30 days. But with love and respect, I want you to know that it's not possible. Most people struggle with eating disorders for years, and that's how long it's going to take to recover. Yeah. But it is, it is possible. And I want you to know that I believe in you, and I know that you can do it. Amen, sister. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Um, I just want to say this was really, really inspirational, and I'm so glad that you were able to come on and highlight some of the great work that you've been doing and some things that people can, some practical tools that people can take into their lives to build a support community, to use social media in a positive way, and to be really honest about their maybe their successes and maybe their relapses so that they can build a long lasting foundation for recovery. Shannon, you are awesome. Thank you so, so thank much. You so much. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, I'm going to um, let Shannon go and I'm just going to um, pop on here and say thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. Um, we have got another episode of Weekly Hope next week on Monday because next week is Thanksgiving. So uh, we're going to do our Weekly Hope episode on Monday. So stay tuned for that guest and topic. As you can probably guess, we're going to be talking about the holidays and how to, to navigate some of that, um, but also um, a few other things. So make sure you join us on Monday for our next episode of Weekly Hope. And just want to say thank you for watching. Also, throughout the comments section, I posted some articles that might be helpful about the aftercare process, about helping someone in recovery. So um, if that's of interest to you, go on. Um, we've got lots of great content on eatingdisorderhope.com that can hopefully help you or a loved one manage this process. So Shannon was awesome. Uh, this this video is going to be pinned to the top of our Facebook page for the rest of the week. It'll also be on our YouTube channel. So check it out, um, share it with friends and wherever you're watching from the world, we hope you have a wonderful, beautiful, blessed day that you know, and you heard that message from Shannon, that you are worth recovery. Um, and that even if you've slipped up and even if you've relapsed, it doesn't mean that we can't take the next baby step forward 
toward making good choices for our health and our recovery. Um, so you got this. I believe in you and um, hope you have a beautiful week and we will see you on Monday for our next episode of Weekly Hope. All right.